we welcome you today on this conspicuous 4th of July to highlight the legacy of a great black orator, activist, and social theoretician, and as well to inaugurate a new web series. His name, Henry McNeil Turner. The series name, Just Is, Just Us, and Justice, a counter-narrative low country and coastal heritage. This is the story of a deeply historic low country, coastal, and Belagichi inspired region. A land of racially tinged colonial and confederate iconography, reenacted and set in stone. It exists in the midst of an immense yet brutally disproportionate omission of African legacies in America. As you can see by the bullet points behind me, Turner was a person of great accomplishment. And of course, as you well know, Africans in America have produced many such people, even in the wake of otherwise impossible odds. So in many cases, it's not merely the accomplishments that are special, but rather the context in which they happen. The way that the person chooses to study, take on, and engage the circumstances, no matter how insurmountable and no matter what the cost. For instance, after slavery, many blacks and their industrious black supporters won state legislative seats. In 1868, however, many ex-Confederates were being recommissioned as federal Union-side troops. In the context of this trend, White legislators drafted a bill to remove all black representatives from the Georgia legislature. And years later, the first comprehensive National Civil Rights Act of 1875 was reversed by the Supreme Court in 1883. Upon being removed from his Georgia seat, Turner responded with, and I quote directly, I am here to demand my rights and to hurl thunderbolts at any man who would dare cross the threshold of my manhood. Never in the history of the world has a man been charged with the offense of being of a darker hue than his fellow men. Turner was a person deserving well more than a few bullet points. He was a fiery and intensely determined advocate for black people's rights and security at a time when many other colored leaders preferred to stay in step. They prefer not to speak out about or think about or even pursue controversial subjects like lynching or voting rights, equal education, armed self-defense, women's rights, and poverty. His legacy was one in which caused his narrative to be historically displaced and even disappeared from the record. Then, just like today, we can see many of the same trends from the past. The scenery and the methods have changed, but the effects are all too familiar especially in cities like Savannah, Charleston, and other places where gentrification, segregated schools, and poverty exist beside racist icons, monuments, and even racialized terrorist murder, all within the web of a new Jim Crow reality. Henry McNeil Turner generated a narrative about such issues both before and during the original Jim Crow. That narrative deserves to be continued today. Not just a list of facts, but is a connected Sankofa 360 degree appreciation, a multidimensional awareness, which allows us to clearly acknowledge that the past, present, and future are ground zero in a continuing struggle for justice. Turner, the starch radical black Republican, in his 1906 address to the Georgia Equal Rights Association Convention said, and I quote directly, I used to love what I thought was the grand old flag and sing with ecstasy about the stars and stripes. But to the Negro in this country, the American flag is a dirty and contemptible rag. This powerful statement from an aged man who had such a commendable list of now sanitized accomplishments, a man who was appointed by Lincoln himself, a man who was a postman, participated in the workings of government, voting, and constitutional ethics, why would he say such a thing, not merely as some young, unseasoned firebrand, but as an experienced elder? This is our starting point, our blues and ring shout narrative, our search for the stories, the truth, the sound, movements between the cracks and beneath the surface of an otherwise smoothed over American mythology. The existence of offensive or questionable commemoration in this region are much more than matters of removal, veiling, or museumification. 
They actually are a prime opportunity for those interested in claiming the trove of omitted and blotted out African and other related history and culture. If you decide to visit the Low Country Heritage and Coast, come with an expectation, if not a demand, that the full telling of his heritage be presented and that efforts are continually made to keep building upon that resource. All of our cultural histories link us in America, and they are not ready-made or fixed or ready for a museum. In the same way, color, heritage, nor race are a match for truth, freedom, and justice. They are alive and reshapable now in a common cause. So let us tell more truth and find more truths to tell. In the spirit of Turner's enthusiasm, we will present a heritage narrative which is more than a stream of disconnected fun facts and names. The histories of Turner and the many blacks like him are the voice of those whose stories and exploits counteract safe, neutralized, true language double talk. Those folks have faced a type of historical banishment, not always by name or fact, but by references and context. They all actively and decisively pursued justice. We will engage the references and context, which are the substance of a relevant past, present, and future, a narrative of inspiration, dialogue, and genuine change. In the words of Afia Naganzwa, the call for justice is arising more and more frequently. It is not enough to talk about forgiveness, not enough to talk about healing, but that only healing can come with justice. In upcoming episodes, we will look at a number of persons and events from the coastal and low country region. To learn more about Turner and or see electronic media concerning this program, try.